Hey everyone, in this video we're going to go through a hypothesis test very carefully and explain what is going on. So, it says, suppose 222 subjects are treated with a drug that is used to treat pain, and 53 of them develop nausea. Use a 0.01 significance level to test the claim that more than 20% of users develop nausea. So before we even do the problem, let's talk about what's going on. So they're telling us that 222 subjects are treated with a drug. So that's n. That's the sample size or the total number of observations. Then they tell us that 53 of them develop nausea. So that's the number of successes. This is a proportions problem, and you can see by the p's here. And typically when you have a proportions problem, you always have n, which is your total number of observations, and x, which is your total number of successes. Okay, then the, set, the question says, test the claim that more than 20% develop nausea. So why would it even ask that? Well, if you divide 53 over 222, if you put this in your calculator, let me try it, um, you get 0.24. Okay, so 0.24. So about 24% of users treated with this drug are developing nausea. So there was 222 people, and 53 of them developed nausea. So pretty much 24% develop nausea. So is it true in general that more than 20% of users develop nausea or is this a coincidence? In other words, is this a coincidence? Right, because it could be a coincidence, right? So what a hypothesis test does is it will tell us whether this is just a coincidence or whether it's true in general, right? Because again, the question says, Test the claim that more than 20% of users develop nausea. Well, we know 24%, so what's the test? It's because this is from a sample. So this could be a coincidence. So a hypothesis test will tell us a definitive answer. Okay, so let's go through the motions. So we have n and we have x. So the very first step in a hypothesis test, it's really important to write down your steps, is to state the null and alternate hypotheses, or alternative hypotheses. So in this case, it's P, and you can see the P's here, so it's very, very helpful. But you know it's P because it says 20%, and it's more than 20%. So that's strong, so we keep it. So P is bigger than 20%. And then here it's equals, so P is equal to 20%. It's always equals for HO. Steps 2 and 3 are done entirely in StatCrunch. So let's go ahead and do that. So we go to Question Help, and we go to StatCrunch. And we're just going to go to proportions. So we go to stat, proportion stats. We have one sample. We only have one P, so it's one sample, and it's with summary. Okay, left click. Successes, that's going to be the 53. Observations is 222. And here you enter the 0.20, and the really cool thing is, you see how it matches what, I, we, what we have written down. So HO is P equals 0.2, and then HA or H1, is p greater than 0.2. So everything looks okay. Make sure that what you have written down matches what you have here. Then click compute and then we have the answers for steps two and three. So step two is the test statistic. Um, StatCrunch wants, well I don't know how many decimals it wants, so I'm going to write down a whole bunch of them. So z equals 1.4429855 and then this here, the p-value, that's always step three. Okay, let's go ahead and answer some of the homework questions now. Um, I just started going through the motions and forgot what the question wanted. But if you go through the motions every time uh, on paper and then look at the work, it's much, much easier uh, to get the answer. So it looks like the correct choice would be the first one here, A. That matches what we have. Well done. Then it wants the test statistic. That's step two for us. So two decimals would be 1.44. And then it wants the p-value, which is our step three. So we do it in the same order that uh, they do it. Pretty cool. Uh, three decimals, that's very strange. Um, so if we round this to three decimals, it'd be 0 0.075. 0 0.075. 0 0.075. Good job. Then there's some uh, other question. It wants the conclusion. Okay, so let's go back to our problem. So four. 
Now we have to figure out this next step. So in this next step, we have to look at the p-value and we have to look at alpha. So alpha was given in the problem, it's right here. Use a 0.01 significance level. So alpha is 0.01. So to do this next step, you just look at your p-value and you look at alpha. If alpha is small, if the p-value, sorry, if the p-value is smaller than alpha, if the p-value is smaller than alpha, you reject HO. It's not, so you fail to reject HO. So if the p-value is smaller than alpha, you reject. If the p-value is bigger than alpha, you fail to reject HO. So it's really important to write it all out. Fail to reject HO. Step five, we'll do our interpretation. Now, if you look at the choices here, you could narrow your choices. It's going to be B or it's going to be D. So you just got to get the rest and then you'll have the answer. So let's start uh, our interpretation. So when you're interpreting a hypothesis tests, always start by mentioning the level of significance. So you would say at the 1% because it's 0.01. So if it's 0.05, you would use 5%. At the 1% level of significance, Okay, and then this is the part where it gets a little bit tricky. So we failed to reject HO. Okay, pretend for a moment we rejected HO. If 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 you reject HO, then there is enough evidence to say H1 is true. So if you reject HO, there is enough evidence to say that the proportion is bigger than 0.2. So if you reject, there's enough evidence to say this is true. If you reject, there's enough, enough evidence to say this is true. So if you fail to reject HO, there is not enough evidence. So there is not sufficient evidence. I'll go over that again in a minute. So not sufficient evidence to claim that. So let me go over that again. So you always start the interpretation by mentioning your level of significance. Let me switch colors here. So you always start with this. This is the key part right here. There is not. So how do you get that? Well, if you reject HO, there is enough evidence to say H1 is true. So if you reject HO, let me write that down. So if you reject HO, there is for H1. If you fail to reject HO, fail to reject HO, there is not sufficient evidence. There is not for H1. So reject there is, fail to reject there is not. Reject there is, fail to reject there is not. Reject there is, fail to reject there is not. For H1, right, there are some trickier questions, so you always got to keep in mind what's going on. So we fail to reject HO, so there is not enough evidence to support H1. So there is not sufficient evidence to claim that the proportion is bigger than 0.2. So you can usually go um, to the sentence the last question right here, claim that more than 20% of users develop nausea. That more, usually the last sentence tells you what goes here. More than 20% of users develop nausea. Na nausea is spelled kind of funny, N-A-U-S-E-A. -E so always start by mentioning the level of significance. If you reject, there is enough evidence to support H1. If you fail to reject, there is not. So reject, there is. Reject, there is. Fail to reject, there is not. We fail to reject. There is not enough evidence to claim that. And then you just go to the last sentence, usually right here, that more than 20% of users develop nausea. So it's going to be fail to reject. And we said there is not. So you can just basically only read the first few words to get it. Fail to reject, there is not. That should be the answer. So that's it. I hope that made sense. This video is kind of long. Um, I'll just uh, make a few more and hopefully that helps. That's it.